A little promotion. I've released my own Webtoon on Webtoon Canvas, English. Initially, I plan to submit it just for a contest. But if I have time, I might update it regularly. This is because I'm also working on another project with a studio. All right, enough small talk. Let's get straight to the point with some tips and tricks to make Webtoon creation more efficient. The first tip is how to create a Webtoon page. By the way, this only applies to the EX version of Clip Studio. When making a Webtoon, you can check the file size criteria for publishing. As shown here, the size per page is 800 by 1280 pixels. When working on your Webtoon, it's best to use a continuous vertical canvas, like this example, to make panel spacing much easier to adjust later. The canvas size I usually use is 800 by 19.2 thousand pixels, which is equivalent to 15 pages of the standard Webtoon template. If you feel like the page isn't long enough, you can go to Edit and Change Canvas Height to adjust it as needed, either extending or reducing the height. Additionally, if you need to add more pages, simply right-click on the page and select Add Page. Next, you can enable the on-screen area preview for your Webtoon. This feature helps visualize how your Webtoon will appear when read on a mobile device. You can adjust the preview scale settings. In my case, I set it to 1 to 1.6. After that, turn on the on-screen area webtoon feature, and your canvas will look like this. With this, you can plan your paneling more effectively for mobile reading. As I mentioned in my video about paneling, try to limit the number of panels to a maximum of two per mobile screen for better readability. Next. Let's talk about the line art process. If you're creating a webtoon in Clip Studio, I highly recommend using vector layers for your line art. The reason is that vector layers make it easier to erase lines and transform shapes. With a vector layer, you can erase excess lines with just one click. Plus, if you need to transform your line art, the vector layer preserves the quality without losing sharpness. Unlike raster layers, which can become blurry or distorted. This will help keep your line art clean, sharp, and easily adjustable throughout the webtoon making process. A very useful feature that speeds up my storyboarding process is the 3D model tool in Clip Studio. You can use Clip Studio's 3D models to assist in drawing webtoons. These models allow you to adjust poses, facial features, and more. Clip Studio provides a variety of 3D assets, including both characters and objects, which can significantly speed up your workflow. Using them is simple. Just drag and drop the 3D model onto your panel. Then adjust its angle and pose to fit your needs. You can also fine tune the camera angle by clicking on the available 3D view options. This feature helps maintain consistent proportions and perspectives, making it easier to create complex scenes without spending too much time sketching. Next is a feature that speeds up the coloring process. I always use this tool for base coloring because it's incredibly fast and easy to use. You can download the material from the specified creator and add the tool to your brush selection. Once installed, follow these steps Set your line art layer to set as a reference mode. Use the tool to create a selection around the line art. With one stroke, your line art will be instantly filled with color. This method is efficient and helps speed up the base coloring process, saving a lot of time when working on webtoons. Next is using the lasso tool for coloring. Since most webtoons use a cell shading style, this tool makes shading much easier and faster. The lasso tool has been a built-in feature since Clip Studio 2.0, so you don't need to download it from the asset library. Use the lasso tool to quickly shade large areas in your artwork. Simply select the area you want to shade, then fill it in with your preferred color. This method helps speed up the shading process 
while keeping the style clean and efficient. Next, I'll explain how to convert 3D objects into line art easily. Using 3D objects is a common technique among Webtoon creators to speed up their workflow. Here's how you can turn a 3D object into line art in Clip Studio. Import your 3D object by dragging it onto the canvas. Adjust the pose and camera angle of the 3D object to fit your desired composition. Adjust the lighting settings to make the line art clearer. Go to Filter, choose Effect, and choose Artistic. Then tweak the line art settings to your preference. I usually apply specific effect settings, as shown in my video, to achieve a clean and readable line art style. This method will be very helpful when you have a scene where your character interacts with many objects. Instead of drawing each object manually, you can simply import the converted 3D objects. It's a great way to speed up the Webtoon creation process and make your workflow much more efficient. Next is using the masking feature when creating interactions between objects and your characters. Here's how to do it. Select the layer you want to mask and click the masking button. Make sure you're drawing on the masking layer. Next, you can erase any unwanted parts on the masking layer. Both the Erase tool and Selection tool work perfectly with this feature, so feel free to use whichever one suits your needs. Here, I'm using the Polyline Selection tool because the object I want to remove has a straight shape. This tool makes it much easier for me to select and erase the unwanted parts quickly and accurately. It's perfect for objects with sharp, straight edges. Erase the parts you don't need. The advantage of using masking is that it allows for non-destructive editing. If you make a mistake, you don't have to redraw anything. Just remove the mask and the original part will be restored. This is super useful for making quick adjustments without affecting your base drawing. To check your work, you can simply toggle the masking layer on and off by clicking the masking button. This allows you to quickly see the changes you've made and ensure everything is aligned properly. Next is using the borderline effect when creating sound effects. To make your sound effects more impactful, you can apply the borderline effect. Simply enable the feature and adjust the thickness to your liking. You can also customize the color to match the style of your webtoon. I also use the borderline effect to create a white light aura around characters to help separate the focus from the background. This adds more emphasis on the character and can make key moments stand out. Here, I'll demonstrate how I create sound effects. I always use a bold and strong font for the sound effect text. After that, I convert the text layer to a raster layer and change the text color to a gradient. Once the text is colored, I apply a white borderline effect to make the sound effect look more sharp and striking. Finally, I adjust its position to fit the composition perfectly. This process ensures the sound effects stand out and have a strong impact in the scene. Next is how to cut your Webtoon pages. If you're working on commissions, clients usually ask for the final Webtoon pages to be exported and cut into the required format. To do this, go to File, pick Special Export, and pick Export Webtoon. Make sure the exported page length matches the size criteria required by the Webtoon platform. This ensures your pages are properly formatted and ready for upload. Don't forget to set the folder where you want to export your Webtoon so you can easily find it later. After that, click OK and the exported files will be saved in the designated folder. Next, you can try to upload the files that have already been cut. Since this is an automatic feature in Clip Studio, the cuts will be perfectly aligned and clean, so you don't have to worry about any unwanted lines that usually appear due to size errors when cutting manually. This ensures that your Webtoon pages are neat and ready for publishing. In addition, the automatic naming feature for the cut files also makes the upload process easier. 
you no longer need to worry about the order of the images when uploading them to a Webtoon platform, as the files will already be named correctly and in sequence. This saves time and ensures everything is organized for a smooth upload. And that's it for some tips to help you create your Webtoon and work more efficiently. If I have any additional tips, I'll share them in another video. That's all for today's video. See you next time.